Coffee Break live stream. So pleased to have so many folks here on a random Tuesday afternoon. Usually our lives are at noon on Fridays. So to see you at three on a Tuesday is just delightful for me. Thank you for being here. Lewis Cook, our lovely channel member saying, hi, Christy. I hope you're having a wonderful vacation. I am. Bill Davies finally gets to join on one of these lives. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, Nancy, always a great friend of ours. Hey there. Hope Whistler is treating you right. It is. Um, today is actually the perfect day to do this because the weather is kind of gross. I'll take you outside in a second and show you, but it is raining down here. And then it is really, really foggy and hazy up top. Like it's really hard to see. <laughs> um, if I have anyone here, hey, Christy, hey, Charlie, good to see you. Um, and I am by the fire. I'm not even kidding. This is what I was going to be doing anyway. And so here you're with me to join me and enjoy all this coziness. Um, I'm also drinking what I would be drinking ordinarily anyway on an occasion like this. Athletic Brewing Company beer. They A lot of places here have the Corona Sun Brew. That seems to be the non-alcoholic beer of choice at a lot of restaurants and bars here at Whistler. I like the Athletic. Mm. Hi, John McVay. Good to see you. Hey, Teddy. Hey, Matt. Having a great vacation. Um, so yes, I love this stuff. And as you guys know, if you have been with us for a little while, we are proud to be working with the folks at Athletic. So our code is breakfast all day. You get 10% off. This is the IPA. I like it a lot. I also really like their golden and everything that I tried from them is great. So breakfast all day is your code for that. Okay, got that out of the way. Um, hello, Mick Lebowski. Are you in Vancouver? That's so great. We love Vancouver and we stopped through there on the way up and on the way back. It's a great city. So um, I'm happy that you're there. So, um, oh, thank you, Javier, for liking my shirt. I don't know if Todd Lamp is here, but Todd, this is a shirt that one of our viewers sent me. And I thought, you know what? If not now, when? Now is the time. Hi, Jacob. Hi, Lacusto. Hi, Javier. Um, so um, <laughs> Derek says, every time I see a fireplace, it reminds me of when Casey Affleck killed his family in Manchester by the sea. These things shut off automatically. And it's behind a glass thing. We're going to be okay. But thank you for your concern. Um, but um, today's a good day to do this. You guys want to see what it looks like outside? It's totally gross. Let's go out on the balcony and I will show you what it looks like. If I can flip it around. How do I do that? Oh, here it is. All right. So if you can see, it's kind of drizzling. Somewhere up there is a mountain. Somewhere over there is the gondola. I promise you there's a mountain up there, but it is hard to see it today. So um, I like to do these things out here sometimes, but it is too cold and gross. So we're gonna go back in by the fire. So a lot of times way up top, I don't know if you guys are skiers, there's a point where you just can't see shit anymore. <laughs> there's a point where like, it's just really foggy. And as you're going up on the lift, you realize like, oh, oh, I can't see anything. And that's what happened today with us. Um, if you guys know Whistler at all, we were on the Harmony side of Whistler and we thought, oh, we'll be fine over there because it's low enough down and it's not the peak chair where like literally you can't see the chair lift. It disappears into the haze with that. Oh, we'll be fine. And we're going up the harmony lift and literally it is like that vortex at the end of Barbie. It's like you're surrounded by nothing and you can't tell what's the sky and what's the snow unless someone comes down or run in front of you. And I was like, Oh, look, there's people. <laughs> um, yes. John McVeigh, foggy and gloomy. Omar, um, I will answer your question in a sec. Let me finish the story real fast. So um, we got to the top and this happened a few times now. Like you just can't see shit. And so you just look at the little dots on the sides and you know that like the dot on the right tells you, okay, here's where the run is. And the dot on the left is the orange dot that says like, don't go beyond that or you'll plummet to your death. So you just try and stay within those dots until you get low enough down that visibility returns and... So we made it. But what happened was I kind of panicked and forgot how to ski. <laughs> I was like, I have no perspective on where anything is here. And I just kind of went, eh. <laughs> but it was okay. Yes, party at my chalet. So um, anyway, so it's a good day to go in early. We left, we stopped skiing at like one o'clock. 
So literally drinking a beer by the fire is what I'd be doing right now anyway. So I'm pleased that you're all here to join me for that. It's a little disorienting though. It kind of freaks you out. It's a little sense of panic that sets in. So mm. it is a Xanadu t-shirt. Thanks to one of our viewers, Todd. So thank you very much. Um, Richard, I'm sorry, I don't speak German, but I see you're writing about Manchester by the sea. <laughs> yes, I was in the good place, Boyd. I kept waiting for like the Billie Eilish song to come in and Rhea Perlman to tell me it's all gonna be okay. So um, I have not watched the, um, the Nickelodeon documentary. I know a lot of folks have asked us, like, have you watched it, will you watch it? I kind of don't want that information in my brain. Like, I think I've read enough about it and I know what it's about. And growing up in LA, I have many friends who were in commercials or acted or, you know, left school early to go on auditions and get headshots and all that. One of my best friends was the daughter on Mr. Belvedere, Tracy Wells, we have dear, dear friend since we were 12 years old. And so I know a lot of stories from her. Nothing bad ever happened to her, but just she was surrounded by a lot of that. So I, I know all of that. So anyway, Kay Walton says it's a lot to take in. Yeah. Dexter made me think of force majeure. Yes, I think of force majeure literally every single time I go skiing without fail. Chris and I had lunch today and like we were nowhere near any place that there might be an avalanche coming toward us. But I think about it all the time. Um, yes, uh, Xanadu. It's so good. I love it. Matt says the, the Nickelodeon doc is super depressing and it ruined my entire Sunday. So you couldn't necessarily recommend since you already know what's going on here. Yeah, I just don't. I'm glad it exists. I'm glad that people's stories are coming out. I'm glad that it's eye-opening for some folks about what this industry can be like for young actors. But um, I don't need to have that in my brain. And so I shall not. Um, Paul Jeremiah Hayes, did you watch the Steve Martin documentary? No, and I want to. I really want to, because um, he's great. It just happened to come out right as we were leaving town. And so I didn't get to. Um, Seth, good to see you. When will you guys start recapping Shogun? I'm hoping Tuesday of next week. So like um, after we get back, I'm hoping that that Tuesday we can have caught up with the first two and then we can do that. But that's how I have it in the schedule at least. Maybe Alonzo has some other ideas. I don't know. <laughs> um, Yes, Jack252, thanks for being a channel member. Have you seen the Pop-Tart movie trailer? Yes, we talked about it, or I talked about it. I did a, a live, a news live by myself on Friday, Thursday, before we left town, and talked about that. It looks fun, right? There have been all these corporate origin story movies, Air and Blackberry and the Flame and Hot Cheetos movie, and this looks like a very knowing kind of silly parody of all of that. Hi, Jesse. Hope you're having a wonderful time. I am having a wonderful time, actually. Um, this is our third day of skiing. We love Whistler. We come here pretty much every spring. It is just so easy. It's just, it's giant and there's a massive array of terrain. Uh, we have different things we like to do. Nick likes to do jumps. Today, we put him in a teen lesson, teen mountain adventure thing, because I think he's had enough happy fun time with his parents for a bit and needs to have other kid time. <laughs> Today was a good day. And Nick's a really good skier, but he's like this close to being great. There are little fine tuning things that somebody with a clue should tell him who is not his parent. So that's what we did today. Um, yeah, so Steve Martin doc is pretty good, says Joe. Great, John McFace says I need to watch the Steve Martin doc, good. I don't know the James Marsden connection. I think did he did he vouch for the for the guy at first and then uh, backtracked on that? McLebowski, do you have you seen or do you plan to review Wicked Little Letters? Yes, we're also doing that on Tuesday. This is the Jesse Buckley Olivia Coleman movie. Um, Javier wants to know, do you plan on watching the first Omen? I'm not sure I'll be able to catch up with it now. It screens this week. There's you know. Only so much can be done, right? So Alonzo's going to go see Monkey Man, and he'll have a quick little out of theater reaction for you on that on the Thursday. But the last Omen also screens this week, and unless it's great, is that rain? Oh, it's really raining now. This is a good time for my kid to come in from the <laughs> from the mountain too. Wow, it's really raining now. Okay, um, so yeah, I'm not sure I will. I'm not sure. Let me know if you guys see it. If you like it, let me know. Hello, Kelly. 
happy holiday. How's the skiing? You know, the first two days were great. And we're getting fresh snow up top right now as we speak. So hopefully that will get better. But um, it was raining and really, really bad visibility. And I just find that frustrating. You know, like I'm just too old. I'm <laughs> it's, and it gets scary when you can't see. Ready for challengers, says Kay Walton. Yeah, we're seeing that a week from today. Day, I want to say is when the screening is. They're showing up to us pretty early. Yes, um, Lacusto Dev Patel did also direct Monkey Man, um, and he stars in it. It looks like his John Wick movie, doesn't it? Mm. It looks pretty interesting. So I want to see it. It's just screening while I'm gone. Matt says, I finally got to see Problemista the other day. Did you guys review that? I can't remember. Either way, I had fun. World class Tilda Swinton nuttiness. Alonzo saw it. I did not get a chance to see it. So perhaps we'll get an opportunity to catch up with that at some point too. Kelly, yes, I am being careful. You know, at this point in my life, I'm 51 years old. I have nothing to prove. I am not trying to haul ass down the mountain. I'm curious to know how many of you guys here are also skiers. Wondering how many of you out there, this is relevant. <laughs> You're not necessarily here for the skiing content. I realize that. Um, hello, Ed Looney. Good to see you. Dylan wants to know a favorite place to go in Whistler. Um, are you a Longhorn fan? Go to Purebred. So we like uh, Creekside Pizza, Creek Bread, the pizza place. They do really interesting, weird pizzas with like pulled pork. They're amazing. I like that a lot. We like Dusty's for Opre. You know, it's a good patio. I watch everyone come down. Um, a lot of the stuff in the village, like a lot of the bars right at the foot of the mountain are like super young party bars. And that would have been fun like 30 years ago. Um, Garibaldi Lift Company is right there at the, at the, it's above the gondola on Whistler. And that's kind of fun. Dylan skis in Whistler too. Dylan, where do you like it in Whistler? Let me know. Um, Dylan, we love that whole harmony side of Whistler and then on Blackcomb, like Seventh Heaven is amazing. We love all of that, but that got really crowded yesterday because it was sunny. So um, SLC, Great Vacation. Can you name a couple of your favorite classic movies? Um, so many. I mean, Casablanca comes to mind, of course. We are going to start um, recapping Ripley on our Patreon on Friday. That is the latest Patricia, Patricia Highsmith adaptation. I love Strangers on a Train. Um, it's my favorite Hitchcock movie. When people ask me, what's your favorite movie ever? I always say Fellini's Knights of Kiberia, which is just a personal choice because my mom loved Fellini and she was a huge influence on me loving film. And that was her favorite Fellini film. So that's just a few of them. Hi, Rob O'Connor. Finally made it to a live stream. Derek tried snowboarding back in the day. She just started with skiing. Mick Lebowski, any plans to take the sea to sky gondola for fun? Do you mean the peak to peak? Do you mean the one that goes from Whistler to Blackcomb? We did that. It's fine. We got one of the ones with the um, the glass bottom, which is terrifying if you're afraid of heights, which we are not. Um, Poposterous, love Whistler. Glad you're enjoying yourself. We are. We love it here so much. It's just it's so convenient. We were riding up on the lift with a, a really nice woman who used to be a ski racer, who was going off about how great Revelstoke is and and Fernie and Kimberly and other Canadian places. And this is just so easy. Mm. Jesse says, oh, Lodi wants to know, have I ever held a skied? I have not. Hella, no, I have not. Jesse, the godfather for me. Unofficial answer is Jaws. Top two are original. That's okay. Those are both really, really great. It's good. Rob says, love you. And Alonzo says, what the flick days. Thank you. Appreciate that. Spent many an afternoon watching your videos, waiting for classes. Oh, I'm so glad. Hopefully you did well in those classes too. That's really great. Javier, I attended an early screening of The Omen. Was impressed but disturbed by some of the imagery. It shares some similar themes with Immaculate. Oh, interesting. Have you guys seen this completely brilliant ad campaign that Neon is doing for Immaculate, where they're taking angry tweets and like angry reactions from Catholics, from Christians, and like putting it over Sydney Sweeney's face on the poster. And that is the marketing campaign. <laughs> I think that's very, very smart. Um, Ross Bristow says, Hook is my favorite movie ever. I know, I know. <laughs> um, no, I've never been to the Alps. 
I've never skied in Europe anywhere. I have skied in the US and Canada and that is it. And in Canada, we have been to Whistler. We've been to Banff several times. And uh, when we were first just dating before we were married, we lived in the Bay Area and we used to go to Tahoe a lot. Right now at spring break for the kids where we live and a lot go to Mammoth. And Mammoth is giant and probably very crowded right now. The 666 discount for Immaculate. Yes, that is brilliant. I love it. Yes, Matt Neon is killing it with the ads and the 666 tickets. Like, why not, right? Like, why not just embrace the fact that you piss people off? It's part of your job. <laughs> um, yes, my day I do t-shirt. Thank you, Kelly. Yes, listen to Living Newton John. Yes, for sure. I skied in this today. I, I thought she'd, she'd bring me good luck, but she did not. It's not her fault, though. Uh, Rob says late night with the devil's marketing campaign needs to take notes from immaculate. Right. That's very clever. Uh, Joe wants to know, Hey, Christy, have you ever been to, have you ever been an extra in a movie or TV show? I used to do background work on the X files in Vancouver. You saw some things that was also probably pretty early in, you know, how much production was going on in Vancouver. There's so much now, like as Alonzo, I'm sure can tell you, he probably knows specific street corners where they shot Hallmark Christmas movies there. Mm. Is the first omen a prequel? I don't know. I don't know, Alex, I'm not sure. Um, Matt says, I saw someone put the angry Catholic Twitter post about Immaculate on a t-shirt. Yeah, Neon should be more like A24 with the merch. That is true. Um, yes, and Lacusto smile had random people standing at sporting events. Right, that was terrifying, right? There are people with like the creepy smile smile sitting behind home plate during baseball games. Like that's really, really effective. Um, what have you guys seen that you have liked lately? What, what movies have you seen? It's kind of a downtime right now in between the Oscars and um, the summer movies that are coming out. Challengers looks really good. Any, any Luca Guadagnino film I'm always interested in seeing. So I'm curious about that. Um, Mick Lebowski says, it's always fun to see what city Vancouver is standing in as for different films. Yeah. Oh, hi, Steve. Looking stylish in my ski gear. Thank you. Hope I had a pleasant Easter. Thank you. We did. We skied. Um, thank you to you and Alonzo for filling my movie morning. Hello. Well, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Um, yeah, we skied on Easter and it was sunny and there were a lot of really cute little kids with bunny ears on their helmet. So that made it really, really fun. Um, Seth said, I saw Love Lies Bleeding last week and loved it. I want to talk about the ending, but don't want to ruin it. Do you think the ending worked? We could talk about whether it worked, but I don't want to give away what happens for folks who haven't seen it because it it goes somewhere. <laughs> it changes for sure. X-Files rule. Do you remember that song, David Duchovny, Why Don't You Love Me? <laughs> no, I don't, but that's kind of funny when, when you read it. Hi, Danny. With the downtime, going to watch Gone with the Wind on the big screen next week for the first time. Danny, thank you for telling me that I shouldn't do this today. <laughs> you and Cody both were like, please don't. Please enjoy your vacation. And I so appreciate that sentiment. I do. This is literally the best possible time to do this. I am doing nothing. I am not skiing. It is gross outside. And my husband's picking up my kid from the Whistler side for his lesson. So I would just be doing this. And it's more fun to do it with all of you. So thanks for being here. Ross says they thought the ending worked because it was in the head. Okay. Right. And I think the ending is a, a, a expression of how they feel in that moment, right? Like it's probably not really happening, but the the love that they feel, that connection, that freedom is probably a reflection of that. Kay Walton says, I wish Love Lies Bleeding was doing better at the box office. Is it not? Hmm. Uh, here's a question. Have you seen the doc, this changes everything about women in the film industry? I feel like I have. I don't remember a whole lot of bet. Tell if it was good or not. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Christy. Thoughts on the news that Alex Garland's retiring from filmmaking after Civil War? I had not heard that. He's pretty young, though, right? And he hasn't made that many movies. Maybe just four, right? Ex Machina, Annihilation, Men, and now this, right? So I don't believe it. I think that can't be true. Yeah, there's no way. So 
Anyway, um, yes, Kelly, it was already went wide and lost theaters this past weekend. Oh, yeah. Well, that's unfortunate. We have a review out today. I don't know if you guys saw it of the documentary Remembering Gene Wilder, which was quite lovely. If you guys are Gene Wilder fans, um, it is a very affectionate look back at his career. Alonzo had a problem with the fact that it, it was maybe too celebratory of him and at the expense of some honesty about how some of his films maybe didn't do as well as others, weren't as well received as others. So um, Mick Lebowski says he's supposed to be writing the 28 Days Later sequel too. Grant says he prefers writing films and directing is just exhausting and unfulfilling. That's so interesting that someone who is so acclaimed, right? And is, is, is an auteur, I would say, like one of those A24 darlings like Ari Aster that he says now that this is exhausting for him. It's interesting. It's got to be a lot. Um, Nancy says, I thought Gene Wilder was so sexy in Silver Streak. Well, that's part of what's so interesting with this movie is it, it speaks to his sort of unconventional handsomeness, right? The allure of him. He's not a traditionally you know, attractive guy, but there's something about him and his presence and those eyes and the time that he came along in film history that made him so, I don't know, I think being funny is hugely attractive, right? And like having that kind of great comic timing is, is a big deal. So, uh, hi, Case Madrano. Can I do a British accent? Uh, I'll think about it. I'll work on it. <laughs> Roadhouse is missing two big things from the OG. The bar being a character and Sam Elliott's character. Yeah, I know some folks were, were asking who is equivalent to Sam Elliott's character in this new Roadhouse. And there's not really anybody. Um, I thought the bar was kind of a character, although it doesn't get progressively cleaned up here the way the original one does. Like you see what a dive it is when Patrick Swayze first walks into the double deuce. And then each new time you come back to it, each new scene, it's a little more respectable. Like there are chairs that are all the same, <laughs> for example, and no one is like beating anyone over the head with it. No, I cannot do a British accent. Where are you guys coming from with this question? Can you do a British accent or a German accent? No, I, I, I don't think I will. Vertical camera, no BC, this is just my phone. My phone is on a tripod. I brought my tripod with me to Vancouver and to Whistler. I'm crazy. Hi, Lil Hud Edits. Hello, good to see you. Um, Joe Smith, can you do a Canadian accent A? No, I can just say, sorry, sorry. That's it. And I can order Timbits, I guess that, that counts. Um, do they talk about Gilda Radner in the Gene Wilder doc? Yes, very much. They talk about how they met and what that relationship was like and um, what her death was like and how she handled you know, her, her cancer diagnosis and what those final years were like. And it's very sad. And then you also hear a lot from his current wife or his, I guess she's his widow at this point, um, but how they met and how he found love again. And that was so unexpected for him. So can I do American accent? Yeah, I can do that. Um, do we think Gene Wilder would have modeled for Calvin Klein underwear like Jeremy Allen White? No, Gage, I do not, because that was not his allure. Yeah, we talked about that in our review of the Gene Wilder doc, that Jeremy Allen White kind of carries on that mantle of being like, unconventionally attractive, but having something, that thing, that screen charisma. And um, But I think he's more of a sex symbol, whereas, Jer whereas Gene Wilder never intended that. I think he was always intended to be a comedian and a fearless actor, but like, no, <laughs> I don't see him doing underwear. Girl, what is this about? Hi, good to see you. This is my spring break live stream. Thank you for asking. I'm Christy. I'm on vacation with my family. We are skiing. I thought I would just say hello and just check in with folks, you know, after a long day of skiing and enjoying my non-alcoholic après ski beer. You know, it's kind of gross outside today. We're at Whistler in Canada, British Columbia. Kind of gross, raining, and visibility is kind of yucky. So I thought I would come and do a live stream with you guys. So thank you for being here. That Texan, can you do a Texas accent? I know how accurate it is because I have a lot of Well, shoot. I went to SMU and I was a sorority girl. I sure was. So I can do it a little bit, but um, it's not great. The beloved Joe Flaherty from SDTV died. Yes, Nancy, that is true. 
Oh, hi, Elias. Thank you so much for saying that. I appreciate you. It's really sweet. Um, yes, a legend in Canadian comedy with all of those SCTV folks, Andrea Martin and Martin Short, right? That whole crew, they were all together. Hi, Elias. Hi, B. Good to see you. Mick Lebowski says, as you make a TV show called It's Always Raining in Vancouver. I have seen beautiful days in Vancouver. It is possible. They can do that. Steve's having a quesadilla. Great. Enjoying your lunch at three o'clock in the afternoon. Could we go on a date? I don't think my husband would like that. I think he might not appreciate that. Or my 14-year-old son. <laughs> but you're sweet to ask. Thank you very, very much. Um, tornado warning in Kentucky. Yikes. I don't think that sounds like fun, but that's life in the Midwest, right? Martin Short's autobiography, he refers to that crew in Toronto in the 80s as comparable to Paris in the 1920s for them. Interesting, Jesse. That's a really good tidbit. Gage, yes, people <laughs> people hitting on me. I mean, if folks are here to take the time to say hello and respond, I want to do the same. And as long as folks are respectful and not rude. Um, when I did my Oscar live stream, when I went live for four hours straight on Oscar night, we got some interesting stuff. And there are ways to mute folks who aren't being, I don't know, helpful. <laughs> happy birthday, Cooney, please. Hello, happy birthday to you. Is today your actual birthday? Favorite noir film of all time? That is an interesting question, Skate Alex. Let me think about this. Um, well, I mentioned Strangers on a Train. We did a thing about the third man recently uh, for our members. That was kind of fun. That is a good one, too. <laughs> No, we can't video chat or trade pictures. I'm a middle-aged lady. I'm not sure you want that. Yes, the third man, Jesse, for sure. Hi, Catherine. Good to see you. Dr. Strangelove is great. I'm not sure it's a noir, but it is a really, really good one. Um, Time to hit the hay. Okay, Canadian Forces, base board in Ontario, Canada. I am also in Canada. I am at Whistler. Good to see you. Very good. Double Indemnity is a good one. That is great. I don't know the Muffin Man, but I hear he lives on Drury Lane. I could be wrong about that. Hi, I am new. Hello, Ledetta Joy. Good to see you. What time is it where I am? It is 3.27. We are on Pacific time here on the west coast of British Columbia. While we are skiing, you're on Edmonton. Good to see you. If you live stream long enough, the algorithm sends you to people who might otherwise not be here. Right. So the thing with vertical live streaming, Teddy, good point, is that we are now in the shorts feed for a lot of people who are just sort of scrolling, like my 14-year-old son, and you can stop and hit watch live. And so that's kind of part of why I do this, just to see, you know, who can we meet this way? And maybe folks who don't know about our channel will now know about it. And often that is delightful people and sometimes they are not. And so I can put someone in timeout. Like this person who just asked about farting. I just put him in timeout. Lots of trolls in the vertical. Thank you for subscribing, Kevina Kins. Kev, I'm sorry. Kevakins, hello. Good to see ya. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> still need the books because I'm a YouTube live stream legend. They're just so fun. I just, I love the interaction and it's just a great way to connect with people and it, the immediacy of it, I really, really enjoy. Um, I am middle-aged. Oh, aren't you sweet to offer to love me all night? I, I need that. I'm 51 years old. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. Add some as moderator. That's what I do in my lives. Hi from Calgary, Joe Smith. We have been to Calgary and we have been to a Flames game and we have wandered through all the little things that connect the buildings in Canada. That is always fun. Um, thank you, Kay Walton. So sweet. And thank you to B. Um, I'm probably going to wrap up in a little bit here because my husband and son are going to come home soon. We've got to get all cleaned up and then go to dinner. So if there's any last questions or anything um thank you for all your kind words telling me that i look great for 51 <laughs> i appreciate it you're very sweet thank you rookie player band for subbing i appreciate it hello to you in asia oh nancy i love your question what do you love about montreal literally everything 
it is just the coolest city. It's like our favorite place to go. We spend spring break in Whistler quite often and then some summers in Montreal. We secretly hope that our son will go to McGill <laughs> so we can get like a little penetrate on the plateau. But because winter is so long, summer is magical in Montreal. It's just like every street you walk down and wait, hold on, Jonathan, I have a fun question. What one movie character would you question to see what he or she is doing in the mountains? Liked and sub says B. I don't know. I like your beanie. Thank you. It is. Oh, I think I need to put you in blocking, Elias Guerrera, because you are now being rude. Okay, we don't need sexual stuff here. Thank you for thinking I'm nice and cool. Montreal, though, Nancy, is rad, as I'm sure you know, because you just you walk down any street in the summertime, there's a band playing, people are having you know drinks outside. It's just a really great, vibrant place. So much cool architecture, so much cool art. We just love it there. So um, we go all the time. My husband is half French Canadian. This is why our last name is Lemire. And um, we just sort of feel a, a connection and that'd be great. So thank you for liking my beanie. Uh, who am I missing here? Da, 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 da. Kamo, how did you feel before getting married on your wedding day? Okay, I'll answer this question and then we're up back. So I was young. I was 25 and Chris was 27 when we got married. We got married in Las Vegas. We did not elope. We actually planned this and we invited people and we had like 42 people at our wedding and we got married at Treasure Island. Super cheesy. Um, and I was thrilled. Like I totally knew. We both knew early on we were going to get married all these years later. 26, 27 almost years later, we're still married. And um, I think I was just, I was amped up because people were coming in from all over and I want to make sure that they were having a good time, that they were having fun. And so I made this stupid plan, like we're going to meet every hour on the hour at the sports book and make sure that everyone's like gathered in and you're here and you're connected and you're meeting folks and all that. And I should just let people show up and have fun because it's Las Vegas. Like it's hard to mess that up. So whenever anyone gets married, I always tell them, I tell the bride, do not worry about anybody else. This is your day. This day is for you. People come from all over to see you because they love you. They can entertain themselves for a few hours before the actual thing happens. And then our wedding was all of like two minutes and 38 seconds. <laughs> so there's plenty to do. Um, so it's, it's uh, that is how I felt. I felt delighted and giddy and uh, I'm happy I'm still married to Chris. Um, Kelly had a question for me. I do love you checking in from vacay. I'm going to have to do Patreon to join the conversation on Ripley. Yes, please do. For TV, I'm most excited for that. Have to go. Bye, Kelly. Good to see you. Um, da, 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 da. Matt Bullion, I'm a planner too. And spontaneous wedding feels like chaos to me. Yeah, these are these are my husband's gloves, actually. I have posh gloves. Though these are not mine. My husband has giant hands. I have tiny little hands. These are his gloves. <laughs> um skate Alex. I'll answer your question, then we gotta go. Do you think UFOs are related to aliens? I don't know. Our good friend Christian Harloff has all kinds of UFO content on his channel. So much so that he just launched a whole nother channel just for UFO coverage. I am a cynic by nature. <laughs> so I don't believe these things. Mm -hmm. You guys tell me. All right. Spy Who Loved Me, Steve Catania. Are we talking about James Bond movies? Oh, Danny, what's the first movie that, that Chris and I connected on? My wife and I, it was once. That's so nice. You know what's funny? I realized this when we were talking about Showgirls again recently, that Showgirls was an early movie that Chris and I saw on an early date together in 1995. We are still married. So good. Um, finally, a normal person streaming. Am I a normal person? Thank you, meme memes. Um, what is an abnormal person? I don't know, but uh, anyway. Uh, what do you binge watch, says B. So before Succession ended, before the Succession finale, my husband and I binged the whole first three plus se seasons of episodes, and that was very stressful. There was a day, there was a Sunday, but we watched like nine of them. Like we would watch a couple and then take the dog out for a walk and then watch a couple and then have lunch 
and so on and so on. And I found myself during that period having very strange dreams because I was internalizing it. It's a brilliant show, beautifully written and acted. I'm very sad that it's over. But like watching that much content like that in such a small period of time is not good for your brain. Um, Dirty David Jernigan's here. Just joined. Did you see the SMU has hired away the SoCal men's basketball coach? Yes, I did see that. And um, thank you for mentioning that. And I went to SMU, for those of you guys who don't know. I think that he's going to feel very at home at SMU if he was the USC coach. <laughs> they, are very, they are very, very similar ones. Um, Matt Bullions wants to know, do you care about Curb Your Enthusiasm? Series finale this weekend. Oh, good to know. Yeah, we got to watch that. We do love that. Our son likes it too. You're welcome. Well, to answer your question, there was a trans person streaming that showed their poop in the toilet. Okay, I will not be doing that. Okay. Um, am I wrong? Or does Succession not win any Emmys that final season? Um, didn't Kieran Culkin win? No, it won a bunch. Or am I confusing it with the SAG Awards? I feel like it won drama and Sarah Snook won and Kieran Culkin won, right? Anyway. Hello, Eli. Christy, how often do people fangirl around you in real life? Literally never. <laughs> Never, ever a single time. Joe, I read you were a contestant on Wheel of Fortune. Yes, I was not only a contestant. I was the big winner of the week on Teen Week when I was 13 <laughs> in 1986. And I won a car. I won a car that my mom drove for a while. I won a trip to Tahiti and savings bonds. And in total, it was over like $25,000 worth of stuff. This is back when you could still buy merchandise. So. What is that? Oh, the coffee pot. Anyway. Um, yes, Kieran Culkin won. Sarah Snook. Yes. Okay. It did win a bunch. Yes, Jesse. Succession is akin to Game of Thrones. The latter were a bloodless modern day corporate dysfunctional family story. Yeah. We are going to start recapping Shogun because this is what our folks asked for on our Patreon. We put a poll out there. And a lot of folks were interested in three body problem and a lot were interested in Shogun. And so um, I would love to talk about either, but Shogun it is. And so am I trans? I am not, um, I am me. <laughs> thank you, Gino, for asking that. Sarah Snook and Kieran Culkin won. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, that question threw me. <laughs> I had to think for a second. Anyway, um, I'm happy you're all here. I think I'm going to wrap this up and get ready for folks coming back. I got a shower. We're going to go have dinner with friends. One of my husband's best friends from college and his wife and their son are meeting us up here. So we're going to go ski with them tomorrow. We're going to have dinner with them tonight. So that will be fun. Bye, Jesse. Thank you for your time. Camera has a friend working at Whistler. Where in Whistler does your friend work? That's so fun. Thank you. I will have fun. Uh, enjoy the rest of the vacation. I will indeed. Thank you guys so much to all of you for hanging out on a weird day at a weird time. This is a fun thing to do. That I'd like to incorporate more of these. I'd like to do these, these vertical live streams. They are great. Um, thank you, B. Thanks to the new subscribers. I'm pleased that we were able to meet some new folks here and uh, have a great rest of the week. Hi, Courtney. I'm glad that you made it in time. We're about to end. Sorry. Um, Jay Gar, thanks for hanging out with us on vacation. It was a blast. And uh, so on, just to recap, on Friday, we're going to have the latest, Was It Great or Were You Eight? It is about Caddyshack. So we'll have a poll about that on our community page. Caddyshack, was it great or was I just eight? We're going to start recapping Ripley on our Patreon on Friday. And then next week, we're going to do Civil War on Tuesday. Someone asked about Civil War earlier. Um, we're seeing it Monday night. We'll have a review for you on Tuesday of next week of Civil War. So come on back. Thanks to you. Thanks, Javier. Thanks, Courtney. Thanks, Kay Walton. Thanks, Amin. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks for liking my hat. Thanks, T-Love. And we'll see you again on Tuesday. Bye.